What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. This is my data science statistics tutorial series where I give you all the statistics knowledge that you need to conquer the data science world. Let's talk about probability today. So probability lays the foundation for the overwhelming majority of all of statistics. Now, in the day-to-day -day of your job, you're not necessarily going to dabble directly with probability calculations every day, but you do need to have a healthy appreciation for probability and how it ties together with statistical concepts. Well, today, we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in probability, and by extension, all of statistics altogether, and that's Bayes' rule. Now before we get into Bayes' rule, there are a few other probability rules that are helpful to understand. Now there are tons and tons of different probability rules out there, and I'm not going to cover all of them in this video, but there are a few that you should know first. So let's suppose you have two events, and let's call them A and B. Now when you see probability of A given B, that's basically saying what's the probability that A occurs if we're given the fact that B occurs. So the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B both occurring divided by just the probability of B occurring. That's the definition of conditional probability. Pretty straightforward, right? It's also helpful to think about the probability of one of the events occurring in relation to the other one. So the probability of B is just equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A plus the probability of B given A complement times the probability of A complement, where A complement is just A doesn't happen, so the probability of A complement is just 1 minus the probability of A. Now this rule is actually pretty intuitive when you think about it, because all it is is breaking down the probability of B across both scenarios. What happens when A occurs and what happens when A doesn't occur. Now one other super important probability rule takes place when the events A and B are independent of each other. So when that's the case, probability of A and B is equal to the product of those individual probabilities. So just probability of A times the probability of B. Now again, this is only the case when events A and B are independent, and this doesn't necessarily directly relate to Bayes' rule, but this is probably the single most important rule in probability other than Bayes' rule. Now as far as Bayes' rule is concerned, it's a very simple formula. It's just the fact that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Simple, that's all there is to it. That rule is going to be true regardless of whether the events A and B are independent or not, and it's a fairly straightforward exercise to derive too. Now it's a simple rule, but it has incredibly powerful implications. That's all wonderful and everything, but I think the power of Bayes' rule is best demonstrated with an example. So let's suppose there's some disease out there, and 2% of the country has that disease. Now let's also say there's a test developed for it, and that test is 99% sensitive as well as 99% specific. So what that means is, if you have the disease, there's a 99% chance you'll get a positive result from the test. If you don't have the disease, there's a 99% chance that you'll get a negative result. But now we want to flip the question and we want to ask, let's suppose you get a positive test, what's the actual probability that you have the disease then? So we can use Bayes' rule to tackle this problem, and let's just start by defining the two events. We have event A, and that's having the disease, and we have event B, and that's having a positive test. All we have to do here is use Bayes' rule. So we have the probability of A given B equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A, that's over the probability of B, which we're not given directly here, but we can solve for that using this extended form here because we're basically given all the rest of this information. Let's start with the numerator. The probability of B given A 
That is the probability of having a positive test given you have the disease. We already have that. That's the sensitivity. That's 0.99 or 99%. We have the probability of A because we know that 2% of the country has the disease. So that's 0.02 or 2%. And these exact two terms are the first part of the denominator as well. The second part of the denominator is where this gets pretty interesting. So we're directly given the specificity. That is, we have the probability that we get a negative test result if we don't have the disease. That's 99%. But actually, if we just do one minus that, now suddenly we have the probability that we get a positive test result if we don't have the disease. Now that's actually probability of B given A complement, and that's 0 0.01. And it's the exact same exercise just to find the probability of A complement. That's just 1 minus 0 0.02, that gives us 0.98, or the probability that we don't have the disease. So we have everything that we need in the equation. All we have to do is solve for the probability of A given B. Once you do all the math, you're gonna come up with 0.669. So there's only a 66.9% chance that you have the disease if you get a positive test. This phenomenon is going to be true regardless of how sensitive and how specific your test is. It's because in the real world, there's no such thing as a 100% sensitive and 100% specific test. And when we have a rare event like this, like in our hypothetical example, this disease only affects 2% of the population. It's pretty rare. So Bayes' rule demonstrates that when you solve for probability of A given B, you don't end up with the super high probability. And it's why when you have these rare events in the real world and you test for them, you end up with this super high false positive rate. Just think about it. If there's a 0.669 chance that you actually have the disease if you test positive, that must mean there's a 0.331 chance that you don't have the disease if you test positive. That's not great for anything. So Bayes' rule is extremely important within the theoretical statistics context because it actually lays the foundation for an entire branch of statistics known as Bayesian statistics. As I'm sure you can see from the example, it has all kinds of practical applications and it's particularly extremely important within the pharmaceutical industry and within any kind of drug testing context. So whether you're a serious data science or statistics student, or you're just casually learning this for your own domain, it is important to understand this rule inside and out. What about you guys? Do you have a favorite, most interesting application of Bayes' rule? Let me know in the comments. So thanks everyone for watching this video. Until next time, Richard, on data.